The good news released yesterday may turn into bad news for our wallets. Also, Congress is planning to vote on Tuesday on a very important bill. And I have an interesting story I want to share with you in this video. I'll give you a little hint. They need to dismantle a bridge in order to get something very, very, very big underneath. <laughs> Let's get right into it. But if you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe by hitting that button right down below the video as it's totally free to do so and so I can keep you updated every single day with all the latest information that continues changing every single day as I truly want to help you out in any way that I possibly can. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Subscribe down below and let's get right into the update. All right, so let's quickly talk about this bill that Congress will be voting on on Tuesday. As of right now, that is the plan anyway, and some of these key deadlines that are coming up for Congress. They actually have a lot on their plate right now. They've got a few key deadlines they need to contend with going forward, and I want to talk about this one that could be alleviated as a result of the votes on on Tuesday. So this one key deadline coming up is February 18th. Now this is the date in which the government is technically funded through. However, this is as a result of the last stopgap bill that they passed a couple months ago. However, as a result of this, if they do not pass another stopgap bill or they do not pass the full budget for the federal government going forward through the rest of the fiscal year, then we could be looking at a federal government shutdown. Therefore, some of the services that we rely on would would not be available for a who knows how long, an extended period of time. Who knows how long it could possibly be. However, on Tuesday, they will be voting on another stopgap bill because, surprise, surprise, they do not have the federal budget done for, to take them through the full uh, calendar year or through the full fiscal year, I should say, not technically calendar year, but the full fiscal year. So as a result of that, they're going to kick the can down the road for a little bit longer and pass another continuing resolution. Now, remember, the key date is February 18th, and it sounds like the House of Representatives will be voting on this on Tuesday. Now, whether the Senate actually votes on it right away or not is another question, but they have at least a little bit longer until the 18th of the month, until we could potentially be facing a government shutdown. But according to what I'm seeing right now with everything going on, it looks like everybody in the you know Congress, the Senate, and the House, it looks like they're totally fine with this, and it looks like they there shouldn't be any issue going forward. So, of course, I'll keep you posted. You never know. Things change really fast, and we may be looking at something here in the next week and a half or so, but again, I'll keep you posted. Also, let's quickly talk about the good news that came out yesterday that may ultimately turn into a little bit of bad news for our wallets. So yesterday we saw that 467,000 jobs were created in the previous month. In the month of January, that 467,000 jobs were created according to the new numbers that were re released by the BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics. However, as a result of that, even though it looks like it's good news, now this is giving a little bit of a runway for the Federal Reserve to start raising rates a little bit more aggressively. Now, what does this mean for us and why do we care about it? The Federal Reserve is the one who raises interest rates. In fact, they just alluded to a couple weeks ago during the last Fed meeting, um, the announcements afterward that they're likely going to be raising uh, rates in March. So March is going to be the next meeting and that's, that's when we're gonna learn if rates are gonna be going up. Now remember, these interest rate hikes impact all adjustable interest rates like credit cards, personal loans, possibly auto loans. Um, lines of credit, things like this, anything that has an adjustable rate um, as far as it doesn't have a fixed rate. Like, you know, for example, like a mortgage, for example, a lot of mortgages are fixed rate mortgages. Well, regardless what rates do, they're not going anywhere because they're fixed. However, if it's adjustable rate and a lot of these other products are adjustable rates, rates will be going up. So if you have, a, let's just say, for example, a balance on a credit card and you're currently paying, say, 19 and a quarter percent or something, you know, that rate may be going up as a result of the next Fed meeting when they raise rates. But we already know that this is going to be happening. But as a result of the very strong market right now, as in the job market and the economy, it may give the Fed a reason to actually raise rates even more. So historically, previously, when they started raising rates, they usually do about a quarter of a point, you know, 0 0.25, 25 basis points. But some people are starting to say they could go 50 basis points, a half a percentage this one time going forward. Also, we're seeing from a, a lot of big banks out there and analysts and everybody right now, they're estimating anywhere between four and seven rate hikes this year. 
If they're doing a quarter a point each, they could be looking at anywhere between one and one and three quarter percent rate hikes this year alone. So again, that's based on a quarter of a percentage. So we could be looking at some major rate hikes going forward this year. And again, if we're paying interest on any kind of loans right now that have an adjustable rate, yep, sure enough, it's going to be raising those rates. So we're going to be paying more in interest. So not a good situation. Essentially, it's just another way that we have to pay more on things right now, right? Just like with all the inflation going on. So great. They're also inflating interest rates. Nice. Uh, anyway, I'm being sarcastic. No, it's not a good thing. So anyway, we just got to be aware of that. Of course, I'll keep you posted as we get that other Fed meeting that's going to be coming up here in March, and we'll see what they actually happen to do. But it looks like rate hikes will probably be almost a for sure thing in March. So again, I'll keep you posted. Also, let's quickly talk about this interesting story. Now, this might bother some of you, but at the same time, let's just think about it for what it actually is here. Um, it's, I mean, honestly, I think all of us would be love, love to be this person and love to have this, but um, at the end of the day, we don't, and <laughs> who knows? But the deal is, it's still pretty interesting. So I think probably all of us know Jeff Bezos, right? The founder, the guy who uh, founded uh, Amazon, he's no longer the CEO, he stepped down, but Jeff Bezos, he's the number three which, richest person in the world. Um, I did not look up his net worth, but it's something like $300 billion or no, it was like $200 billion, something like that. Hundreds of billions of dollars. Either way, um, I haven't looked at it in a little while now, but either way, it fluctuates billions of dollars all the time. My point is, he has a super yacht that he <laughs> is basically done with uh, its work, right? So he ordered this super yacht, and uh, it's a $485 million super yacht. So you can probably just kind of imagine how big this thing is. It's huge, right? Like, unbelievable. I did not see any dimensions on it as far as how big it is, but... It's huge. It's basically like a ship, right? And well, it technically is a ship, right? It's huge. So anyway, the place where this thing is being built, like uh, where it's you know being manufactured, whatever, it's in the Netherlands somewhere. Um, honestly, I saw the name about it. I can't pronounce the name, so I'm not even going to try. But anyway, it's in the Netherlands somewhere. But this port and the the shipyard where this thing is being built. It needs to go out into the ocean now, right? So they can be delivered to Jeff Bezos, wherever he's going to take it and have delivery, take delivery of this thing. However, there's a bridge in the way that uh, in order for this, this, this yacht to get out of the shipyard and out into the ocean, there's a bridge in the way. Well, guess what? It doesn't fit under the bridge. <laughs> so they have to dismantle the bridge in order to get this super yacht out into the ocean. So <laughs> kind of funny, right? At the same time, a little bit ridiculous. So here's what's happening. According to what I was finding, Jeff Bezos is going to pay for the bridge to be dismantled for his yacht to pass through and then for them to rebuild the bridge. So <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just kind of funny. Like the massive amount of money that this guy has, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's super cool at the same time, but I think a lot of us are maybe a little bit envious and a little jealous. I mean, let's be real. I'm super jealous. I wish that I could have that and I wish that I could be having so much money that I could pay for a country to remove a bridge so that my yacht could pass underneath <laughs> and then have them rebuild the bridge on my dime. I mean, that would that is like super mega wealth right there. Anyway, I think it's super cool. But again, I know that a lot of people have mixed feelings about super rich people. I just think it's like so ridiculous that you just got to talk about it because it's like unbelievable, right? So... I don't know. I wanted to share that with you. I came across it and I thought that is a pretty interesting story right there. So I'm sure we'll get more details on the yacht here pretty soon. Um, not sure if anybody really cares about it, but I thought it was super interesting because honestly, let's be real. How many people out in the world right now are that mega rich? There's like a small, small handful. I mean, let's be real. There's like not many, a couple hundred, maybe at the most, not even that many, maybe a hundred or less that have that amount of wealth. So I don't know. It's very interesting to kind of watch what they're doing because it's just so massive on such a huge scale. So pretty interesting stuff. With that being said, let's wrap it up there. I hope you're having a nice day so far. I hope you're enjoying the weekend. Let's bring Corey in here in just a minute for the new updated list of shout outs right here in this video. By the way, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's totally free to do so. Hit that button right down below. Also, feel free to leave your comments and questions down below. I'd love to see what you have to think about that yacht story. <laughs> Again, I think it's just so funny. It's like, I don't know, it just makes me laugh every time I think about it because it's just so massive. There's the incredible amount of wealth that this guy has. Um, but anyway, 
That's we can talk about that separately in a different video if you want. Uh, but anyway, make sure to subscribe down below. Go back and check out any of the other 2,100 videos right here on the channel. And of course, with that being said, let's bring Corey in so she can read the new updated list of shoutouts for the names that are pulled right out of the fan club. If you want to join the fan club or check it out, there's a link down below in the description. Feel free to check it out there. Otherwise, Corey, take it away, and I'll catch you again later in the next update. I'll see you for now. See ya. We are happy to shout out Kimberly A. Lozer. 1624 Madlax, Rachel Ray, Diana Wilson, Donna Spurgeon, Michael Gomez, and Brenda Caballos. Thank you for being members of the fan club.